Well, Donna, it's such a burden for us to let y'all sing like that. <laughs> Jeez. They'll have a table in the back after the service. <laughs> Ben's their manager. <laughs> they haven't let him in the group yet. They're Thank y'all. That was that was awesome. We're we're so thankful that y'all came to sing and worship with us tonight. And uh, tonight, church, we're having the Lord's Supper, and uh, you know it is it is what we're here for tonight. And um, I want to make this kind of brief, but I'm I'm very much a person who believes that the Lord's Supper should be celebrated, and it should be the focus. It should be everything that we're about. When it comes to this, I, I do not believe that, and I, I think I've shared this with you before, but I'm not one who likes to put the Lord's Supper on the end of a service and just then walk out the door. Um, I believe it has so much meaning, and I don't like it to be done rich, with rituals uh, or just the ceremony. I, I like for it to be the main attraction of what we do, and that's why um, when we do it here, we do it with um, a lot of reverence and holiness and pray tonight will be a, a great impact night in your lives just because it's something Jesus instituted and if you have your Bible with you tonight and you'll turn to the book of Matthew the 26th chapter as Jesus instituted the supper there was a few things that he shared with us and I, I like each time every time uh, I have uh, shared the Lord's Supper something always speaks to my heart changes my life I don't believe um, in the 51 years I've been on this earth, nothing's impacted me more than celebrating the Lord's Supper at the tomb. Uh, when we were there and we had walked in and we actually um, got to go in the tomb and we came out and was up singing hymns uh, just above the tomb and we were singing in um, Amazing Grace and some just good hymns of the Lord, getting ready to prepare to take the Lord's Supper. While we were singing, there was a group from Africa who was down below the tomb, and they were singing in, in, um, in their language, and they were singing the same song, and it was powerful. And then there was a group from Europe that was singing, and they were singing a song, taking the Lord's Supper, and it was all these nations singing at the tomb of the Savior that's empty, celebrating what he had given us, the institution of the supper. So it's, it's a, a special time. I, I think about it the way that Jesus put it in the book of Luke, shared it with his disciples right before he's leaving the earth, shares with his disciples, I've, I've wanted to have this meal with you. I want to have this meal with you before I depart. And I just think about it this way. Tonight, I want to celebrate the Lord's Supper with my church family before I celebrate this week such an important day in our, in our, our spiritual life, and that is the birth of Christ. So uh, I want to do tonight the Lord's Supper. And so if you have your Bible and you'll turn to the book of Matthew, tonight, looking in the 26th chapter, beginning in verse 26, would you stand please for the reading of God's Word. And as they were eating, so they had had the Passover meal there. It's important to note that, and uh, each book breaks that down. John, I think his gospel does the best of breaking down uh, the difference between the Lord's Supper and between the Passover meal. So they had actually had the feast celebrating the Passover, and uh, as they were eating, Jesus institutes this wonderful thing that we celebrate tonight called the Lord's Supper. Jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and he gave drink thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remissions of sin but I say to you I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom and when they had sung hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, we thank you for this season, but especially for tonight, a special time with our church family that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And tonight, Father, may we present ourselves before you with holiness and reverence tonight, Father, knowing, God, that you forgave us of so great a debt. We submit ourselves to you as an assembly tonight, praying that we would partake of this supper together in the spirit of Christ-likeness, in a spirit tonight, Lord, that would honor you and give you glory tonight, Father. Thank you for our church family. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things you do at Northside. And tonight, Father, may we return that to you in a time of praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. There are several things in the Word of God that reminds us that when we take this, that it is something Jesus gave the church and reminded His disciples that they would not take again of this until we were gathered together in the kingdom. And I think about that from the perspective of there's a lot of meaning to it. I believe it's one of the things that reminds me as a believer that I should not just go through the motions of taking this Lord's Supper, but prepare my heart, renew my mind to what I'm really celebrating tonight. I I think about it from this aspect. Paul warned the church in Corinth about partaking of the Lord's Supper without reverence, without honor to him. Uh, Matter of fact, in Corinth, they had uh, taken the Lord's Supper and called it a love feast and were actually worshiping pagan idols with it, and it had become a, a literal catastrophe there in that region. And Paul warned them and was very strict in his warning in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians that he actually condemned that selfish practice. He actually condemned a way of coming to the Lord's table without a reverence or a holiness and without the aspect of celebrating what it really is. And so tonight, it's kind of a thought that I have when it comes to this part is, this is not a selfish practice. It's not something we do individually. It's something we do as the church. And it's something we do to remind us of what Christ has done for us, but also to remind us that Jesus is coming back. I heard Adrian Rogers once say, truly as the church, we ought to live like Jesus just came out of the grave, and we ought to live like Jesus is about to come back tonight. And I think about that from the aspect of Paul was saying, when we partake of this supper, when Jesus shared it with his disciples and said, when you partake of this supper, have the remembrance of me. Luke describes that Jesus said, will you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And when I think about that tonight, I believe that Jesus wanted them to look back to understand that he did give his life for the remission of sin. And the two things that we see here tonight and we're about to partake of, of the Lord's Supper is given to us in the form of bread and the cup symbolizing his body that was given for us as a sacrifice to pay our sin debt and for the blood that he would shed. And what does he say? For the remission of sin to remind us tonight that the body was going to be the ransom of heaven. It was going to be a perfect body that was given, a perfect sacrifice that was given, a body that we could not give because sin has crippled us. But a body that was perfect, a body that fulfilled the law, a body that was sent from heaven, that he left the balconies of heaven to tell us this good old gospel story tonight, the story of Christ. And so tonight, when I think about this, I'm reminded to look back to my day of salvation, to think about the fact Christ gave his life to me, and that, in that, it changed me. Jesus saving me changed me. And I'm thankful tonight for the Lord's Supper. I'm thankful tonight that I look back and I realize what was given on my behalf and the blood that was given in remission of my sin. I'm thankful tonight that Christ paid my sin debt. And so tonight, before we take this supper, maybe this would be a good time for us to think back a moment and reflect upon the fact Jesus saved us. This we should keep as something that is personal between us and Him. Something that is our testimony. Something that shares the change and radical change of our life. And I'll tell you right now, I believe every person who got saved got radically saved. Because where else were we going? 
What else were we doing? We were lost. And the Word of God teaches us that when we partake of this supper, we remember that Jesus died for us, that Jesus paid the price for us, that Jesus also loved us enough to call us into His family. And so tonight, that's why I love celebrating it with our church family, celebrating the Lord's Supper because it symbolizes all of us coming together, celebrating that we've been born again, saved, redeemed, the purpose and plan of God working in our lives. The second thing I think about here is this. There's a purpose to what Jesus shared here. And you know what the purpose was? The purpose was to remind us that when we come together together, Maybe we ought to put a thought on kingdom purposes. That maybe we need to remember tonight that he said, I will not observe this supper again until I drink of this cup anew in the kingdom of heaven. You know what Jesus was saying by that church? He was saying, the next time you see me partake of this supper, men. Now think about this. Jesus is about to give his life on the cross. He's Days on earth are coming to an end, and his kingdom is about to be established forever. He's taken his man from off the mountain to a room there where they're celebrating the Passover, and he's been sharing with them. According to the book of John, he shared with them what's going to happen when the Spirit of God comes to live and abiding them. And then he's sitting down to share this last moment of the Lord's Supper with them to say this, I'm about to institute something to you that I will not partake again of because I'm giving my all until we gather together again and you're my bride. <laughs> I'm not going to partake of this again until we're in heaven and we really celebrate the kingdom purpose. What was it about? It was about sharing the gospel. It was about believers it was about the bride of Christ being ready and prepared for that great day when we'll celebrate in heaven the kingdom has come. And Jesus, in his last moments, now church, think about this. If it was me, it was my last moments on earth. Probably the last thing I'd be doing is sitting around thinking about a Lord's Supper or doing something with a bunch of people. I'd be running around telling everybody what they need to do. <laughs> Amen. Especially some of these guys. And I'm <laughs> but, but what was he doing? Reminding them of the purpose. Church, when we sit down here tonight, I'm reminded of the purpose of the kingdom. Why do I preach like I preach? Why do we sing like we sing? Why do we teach like we teach? Why do we gather for the kingdom? So that many will come and know Jesus and if we ever lose our purpose, and I, I, I worry in the kingdom of God today that we're losing sight of what the real purpose is. The real purpose of the church is to share the good old gospel story. And God help us if we ever think we've shared it too much that we don't need to share it again until the king comes. Help us to keep sharing the good old gospel story. I'm telling you, in the Christmas season, we need to share about the king coming to earth. In the Easter season, we need to share about the crucifixion of Christ. And in our life, we need to share the good old gospel story so other people may come into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And then Jesus says, I'm going to spread a feast one day in the kingdom. And we're going to gather together. And then I'm going to drink it with you is my bride we're going to have from the fountains of glory a time like never before when we celebrate the union of the lamb and the bride forever in the kingdom of god wow what a what a picture he was painting to us as we celebrate this supper tonight so you know what it teaches me it teaches me why i'm thankful thankful there's an empty grave tonight and i've been born again it also makes me to think to start looking forward to what's ahead of us, amen? And to what's going to happen one day when the kingdom of heaven is fulfilled and we're in the presence of Jesus. But then it reminds me of one last thing. It reminds me of what he spoke to them in the book of John in chapter 13, verse 34. And as they were sitting there, the betrayer had been revealed. 
and he had shared from the Passover to the Lord's Supper, he made this statement. I want you, if you will, go over to the book of John 13, and I, I could just quote it to you, but I want you to mark it in your Bible tonight. And this is what he said to them, sitting at that table, and he reminded them of this, a new commandment. You might want to remember that tonight. A new commandment I've given you. It's not the 11th commandment. It's a commandment that surpasses and puts a purpose into all the other ten. It's a commandment that is given from the very mouth of God. And this is what he says. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I've loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. You know what Jesus said to his disciples in that upper room that night? That when you sit down at this table, I want you to look around at this table. And I want you to be in the unity of Christian love. When I think about that standing up here tonight and I look across this massive auditorium and all the people sitting here tonight, you know what it reminds me of church? That God continues to call us to unity, to love one another. That the greatest witness we've got in a world of hurt and pain and trouble and sorrow and sickness and death is that we love each other. There's a unity here. We are in the spirit of one accord. And Jesus reminds his disciples that the greatest witness you've got against the power of darkness is to love each other. And that that love is so penetrating and it's so purposeful that it penetrates the very darkness of this culture and world we live in. That when everybody's world is falling apart, the Christian world is still intact by the very fact because he loved us. We love each other. And you know what it does? It puts aside petty differences. It sets aside the table of, of argument. And it lays before us a table of unity that celebrates who Jesus really is in our life. And you know what we have to do, church? As the body of Christ, we've got to protect that unity. We've got to demonstrate that love. We've got to have the capacity in us that Jesus put in us, and that is to love one another so that the world sees Jesus. And you know what happens when we, the body of Christ, come together and we're in unity like this and we love one another? People really want to know the God we serve. They want to know the Jesus we have. I thank God for this very purpose. What drew me to, to God that he loved me first. When I was unlovable, he loved me first. And the love that he's put in my life, the change of the cross, the purpose of what he's done in our life, everything leads to the fact that when we love each other, Christ is glorified in his church. And so tonight, Lord, help us to be in unity and to love each other the way God first loved us. Amen. So tonight, would you pray with me as we partake of this supper this evening and our deacons are coming to serve. And you know what this supper is about? It is about serving. It is about loving. It is about the purpose of the kingdom. It is about what God has created in his body to be light to this world. And so tonight, I want you, if you will, to just at this moment separate in your mind and in your life right now, anything that would distract you from having this moment with your church family in a spirit of love tonight that would glorify God, would you just pray with me tonight as the body of Christ celebrates the greatest supper and the greatest table that's ever been laid for us, the Lord's Supper. Father, tonight, what greater time what greater purpose could we have than tonight celebrating in this season with our family, our church family, the fact that, Lord, tonight we get to come to a table that's set before us. And it's not a table we paid for. 
There's not a table tonight, Lord, that we brought anything to. It's a table that you gave by your life, that you gave by your body, you gave by your blood to redeem us, to set us free, and to remind us again tonight, one more time, that when we take this supper table, we look forward to a promise that one day we're going to take it in glory. One day we're going to take it over the balconies of heaven. As the line of the tribe of Judah sets down with the bride of this earth who's been redeemed and set free. And there we'll have the kingdom meal. So Father, tonight thank you for saving us. Thank you for the body that was given on behalf of our sin tonight, Lord. Thank you for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. Thank you tonight, Lord, for the purpose of the kingdom that others may come and know Jesus. And I even remind her tonight, you are coming back. And so let your church be found in unity, in the spirit of one accord, with the purpose of the kingdom in our, our minds tonight, our hearts. Lord, we come tonight to reverence you. Lord, we come tonight to be holy because you're holy. We come tonight to celebrate with our church family because you brought us into the family of God. Let us give you praise tonight. Let us give you glory with our lives. Let us give you praise with our songs. Let us give you worship from your word tonight, God, that honors you. And all the glory is yours tonight, in Jesus' name. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, amen. I'm going to ask tonight, Alan, would you come? Bill, would you come and take your place tonight in church? Tonight, let's celebrate together the Lord's Supper in a way that would honor Christ tonight. Jesus, you endured my pain. Savior, you bore all my shame. All because of your love. You're the maker of the universe. Broken for the sins of the earth. All because of your love. All because of your love. Because of your cross, that is paid. Because of your blood, all my sins are washed away. All of my life. Freely give because of your love. It's because of your love I trusting we are longing for your blessings Lord and our faith is firmly anchored on your never changing word spirit fall down Lord. 
Lord, we gather in your name, your power. All your promises we claim together bind us with grace the body of christ all for your presence we wait we are waiting we are trusting we are longing lord descend let a flame of love be kindled while before your throne we bend spirit fall down fill our souls now Lord we gather in your All your promises we claim together bind us with grace the body of Christ all for your presence we wait we are waiting we are trusting we are longing Lord we Death is fading, hope is rising in your spirit. We're alive, Lord. We gather in your name, your power, all your promises we claim together. The body of Christ, all for your presence we wait. But Lord, we gather in your name, your power. All your promises we claim together bind us with grace. The body of Christ. Oh, for your presence we wait. Oh, for your presence we wait. Oh, for your presence we wait. As we take this bread, Lord, I just pray that you would help us all as a church to remember you as it's meant to be. In the most precious and holy name, amen. Jesus had taken bread, broke it, gave thanks, and said, take and eat. This body's given for you.
strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no other, your name. Let the nations sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to say.
Lord, we love you and praise you. We thank you that we can come together in your house to worship you. We thank you that we can come together as a family. For, Lord, we have but one Savior whose blood was shed on the cross for us. Lord, we ask you to help guide us, Lord, help us to strive to be in your will and always reflect on what you've done for us. For it's your blood that saved our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. stand together we're going to close this service out just singing uh, singing this uh, traditional carol Shepherds pray at the sun. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. the angels. Bless Northside. Have a Merry Christmas. Father, thank you for the hand on our right, the hand on our left, and the time we've had together tonight in the family room. Father, may you bless each family. May tonight we leave rejoicing and the celebration of our Savior. To God be the glory, the great things that you will do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.